Hey YouTube, I wanted to bring you along while I planned for my raised bed this year in the 2021 season. Now I've had this bed, this will be my second season with it. So I'm trying to plan it out and get as much as possible as compared to last year. Last year I pretty much just planted in rows, going sh short sides, did a lot of rows of onions and spinach and kale and carrots radishes some bunching onions and a lot of other mixed greens some iceberg and then on the trellis at the south end i did some pickling cucumbers which turned out pretty well this season i'm trying the square foot gardening method to try and pack in as much as i can in such a small space or I have more places to plant but I really want to pack in this raised bed with as much as I can grow in one season really succession plant and have something growing in here all season long now my beds five foot short way by seven foot north to south so I should be able to fit a good bit in here you don't have to be precise with your grid just so you can see each square for what it is now the rows worked out well last time but they got overcrowded and it was hard to weed in between and with this square foot gardening method you're supposed to weed a lot less if you have the whole soil surface area covered if you haven't heard of square foot gardening it's when you take your plot or allotment of land that you're going to be planting in and divide it up into one foot or 12 inch by 12 inch sections so it really simplifies each little area you're going to be planting so you don't get overwhelmed by the full area now i drew mine in pencil and you'll probably want to do the same because i've changed mine around at least five times already learning something new and finding a new seed you just try and find place for it in the garden as much as you can now for this raised bed I want it to be as beautiful as it is productive that's also why I'm laying it out in a nice grid pattern so everything can have its own space grow well and look appealing all in the same time to start your plan, you're going to want to know what you're going to want to eat during the year. For me, that's a lot of root vegetables and greens, which is mainly going in here. I will be growing potatoes and tomatoes and other peppers and larger varieties, but that won't be in this raised bed. This is mainly for root crops and greens, salads, and herbs, and I'll plug in some marigolds for color and then like I said on the trellis will be the pickling cucumbers again so we can write that in put a pickling cuke on each side and they can raise some meat in the middle that'll also give my greens a little bit of shade coming from the south end so they don't bolt as quickly in the heat of the summer. For me, what I like to do is write everything on the side that it's going into the bed. Like the cucumber, I'll have carrots, I'll have radishes, onions, Leaf lettuce, spinach and other greens, the kale, some Swiss chard, and some kohlrabi.
And some beets. Can't forget about the beets. They're good for greens and the root swelling. Now I'll have some extra space on the sides because my bed's a little bit bigger than this 5x7 actually, so there'll be some herbs and marigolds to fill in the extra space. Now once you get everything written down on your sheet, you can start plugging it in to the grid to make sure you have everything you want. For my garden, I know these first three rows on the north side are all going to be for my greens. So I'll have a row of kale. Not really a row, but I'll have one in this square. One in this square. Probably one in this square. So three kale there. And then I'll probably put spinach. To finish out the row. Because they'll grow pretty tall and help shade this. And they're on the south side of these three rows. So they'll help shade my greens as the weather warms up. Also with the kale, I'll have chard and chard and chard. I have a couple kinds of chard, so chard's going to go all the way across the bed. But it'll be multi, multiple varieties. As we're coming down into the leafy greens area, I'll definitely be having some leaf lettuce and pretty much that'll be all full rows going all the way to the edge and I'm planning on putting some arugula because all this is going in early in the spring what else Probably some sorrel, cress, and that'll probably be probably that whole square there with the sorrel. I should be able to get three rows of lettuces in each foot section. So let's put the cress down here. with the romaine and I think I'll be growing some iceberg too and I'll throw that down the bottom now I know this whole bottom three squares are filled up with nice leafy greens I can come out and harvest on the regular before they start going to bolt all these greens will be going in pretty early in the spring with the frost cover over them. So meanwhile, while I'll be planting those, let's come over to this area here where there's four squares going north. Going north. I like to have a full bed, so I'm not just going to plant one square and then leave one square blank. So for my carrots, I'll be succession planting so I don't just have all my carrots all at once. So I'll be doing a row of carrots through the top of these, or through the left end of these four. So the first succession row will go on the inside and then I'll do another three more rows of carrots succession every week. So the first week I go out, which will probably be late March, early April, I'll plant these carrots in the first row. As they come up next week, I'll come out and I'll plant this row of carrots just inside. Next week, this row of carrots, and so on. And that way, as the sun comes up and drops on this side of the bed, the larger carrots will be behind the shorter carrots in succession they'll all get plenty of light and space and air 
Now for each square foot, you can get four carrots in a row. So if you were just planting the one square foot, you'd be able to get 16 carrots in this one square foot. So I'll be doing four, 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 four. I'll still be getting 16 each succession planting, but I'll be using a whole row each time. Four in each for 16. And you can do the math to figure out what that is at the end. Another staple in the garden will be white and red onions. Now you can fit nine onions in a square, bulbing onions. And that's giving them plenty of space. There is a method of multi sowing your onions, but this year I'm going to try and actually grow them in this pattern of nine. You can see there you can fit nine ki nine onions in one square. And that's what I'll be doing with this next row of four just inside the carrots. It'll be all white onions in each of these. Now the white onions, they don't succession plant like carrots. Aliums, they'll all bulb to the sun schedule. It's not about the timing, it's about the amount of light that they're getting. So all the onions will go in at the same time. They'll actually need to be started in mid-February to, to be big enough to go out in mid-March or mid-April. And just beside the white onions, the same planting pattern of nine, I'll be doing red onions. So we're getting at least 36 onions of each color throughout these just four square feet each. It'll be eight square feet for onions there. Now to the other side of the red onions, I have another eight square feet for planting. And these first two here I'll be doing kohlrabi. I've never grown kohlrabi before but it looks really cool so I'm just gonna have to grow it. You can put four of them in a square foot. It's like a four on a die. You can fit four in there. I'm doing it to this square and this square gets kohlrabi. So I'll write that in now, make a little mark, show how I'm going to plant it, and it fills in two more. Now just north, or actually this is south, just south of the kohlrabi, there's two more square feet. Now it's going to be a multi-sown beet root. You can grow beets three, four in one cell, and then you can just plug them in. You don't have to split them up like you do onions. So the beet root's going to be sown in a pattern of nine, like the onions, but there's going to be at least three beets per, per hole. So nine times three, there'll be 36 beets roughly in each square foot. I'll write that in here. Okay, so that's going to be a lot, a lot of beets for a small area, and all that food's in here, and we still have four square feet to go. It's a lot easier with this square foot method to not get overwhelmed and really just take it piece by piece. What they say, how to eat an elephant, it's a bite at a time. Now for this last square feet, a lot like the carrots, you have to succession plant radishes so you don't get them all in one harvest. You want to be eating radishes all year long. So I'll do the same thing with the radishes. You can get 16 in a square foot, but I have four square feet. So I'm going to be doing four in each one going in a row. So I'll mark that in here. Radish. I have two different types of radishes, the Cherry Bell 
and I believe a French breakfast, but it doesn't matter. You just want to plant all your radishes together in succession so you get them whenever you want them. So that'll be four, 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 and four radishes in a row. I still have plenty of space in these four squares. That first week I'll be planting the radishes in this row. The second week I'll be planting them on the outside. So that'll be giving me a succession of planting. And plenty of radishes. Now, there's still plenty of space in between the radish rows, which I'll be planting bunching spring onions. You can multi-sow those, which means you'll put four, five, even six, pretty much six to ten you can put in these bunching onions. They don't mind being crowded, they actually enjoy it. So you put in a bunch of these, I'll get at least four bunches in each square foot. So I have 16 bunches of spring onions. You can plant the spring onions in succession because they won't be bulbing, so you won't have to wait for the light cycle of the sun. They'll actually just grow and stay little sticks. They'll be done relatively quickly in about 50 days. You won't have to wait for the bulbing to occur. So that pretty much fills up this bed. Fills up this whole raised bed with a lot of veggies and greens to eat this year. But that's not all with the raised bed because these beets will be done in 50 days. This row of radish will be done in 30 days. Those onions will be done in 50. Kohlrabi's done in 60. The red and white onions will be done in about 100 days. And the carrots, each succession is going to be done every, in 70 days after the planting. The kale's going to spinach and chard will last as long as they can until the heat of the summer get them. And same with all the leafy and greens. So what we'll have to do is plug in more plants as they come out. So that brings us to succession planting. And there's a lot going on with that. With succession planting... I'm doing it with the carrots and those will come out successively every so every week or so I'll be getting another round of carrots which will be good same with the radishes and spring onions I can come out and harvest these greens every week for a good four to five weeks before they'll be done as long as we have a nice slow cool winter or spring spring like I'm hoping now I will be putting a shade cover over these greens because we do sometimes get a hot summer quick. So that's why I put all my greens together is to put a nice shade cover over them. I could probably cover the whole bed if I really need to, but we'll see how that goes. Now with these leafy greens, since they'll be done early, as they're getting to their fourth round of pick, I'll probably start planting some carrots in between each row of greens and they won't come up and disturb the greens for the time being as they're still growing but by the time they start going to seed and bolting because of the heat those carrots will start popping up and I'll probably plug in some bunching onions in there as well and radishes as the time goes on because I really enjoy the carrots and always eat onions so can't ever have too many of those. As I pull the first round of radishes out, I'll easily put in another round of radishes. And since they're so fast, about 30 days to harvest after germination, I'll be able to get in a few rounds of radishes in the same spot. It's really not necessary to crop rotate if you're going to be planting successively over and over again because there's always something in the ground taking up nutrients, putting nutrients back. You want probably halfway through the season while you're pulling up these onions and putting in some more, pulling up the lettuce, putting in some more carrots and whatnot. You'll want to put in a little bit of fertilizer, just a half an inch layer of compost to keep the bed going. Mine's pretty heavy clay soil. It's 
heavy clay content but there's a lot of sand in there some compost from last year but but since it's only my second year with the bed it's not a perfect compost soil yet still working on it now these pickles cucumbers will go all season they won't they won't stop as long as you keep them pruned back and keep harvesting them don't let the pickles get real big because they can get they can get real big if you leave them on and don't harvest them we jar a lot of pickles so those two plants will actually be plenty for our family now you might be wondering about all the other vegetables you could be growing like cabbages all your brassicas broccoli tomatoes peppers all the other ones they won't be going in my bed here I have plenty of space I just want to utilize my space to the best I can so that's all that's going in this raised bed they'll be I have extra space along the sides I'll be plugging in marigolds and different herbs to give another smell keep the pests down bring in beneficial insects it's another reason I'll be covering my greens to make sure that they're not getting eaten up too soon but I'm gonna be getting these in rather early hopefully before the bugs are real bad and that's part of my plan is to use the time of year to help combat a lot of the issues in the garden if you're thinking about companion planting that's not what this is you don't really need to companion plant there's no real evidence saying how one plant talks to another to really benefit it the flavor or anything so this is just smart planting and polyculture trying to get as much in one area confuse the bugs if you have a monoculture that just all kale right here or chard or any of it the bugs will definitely smell that out and they'll be coming in regularly to get something to eat if you put in a lot of different stuff in a small area it'll confuse the bugs it'll bring in beneficial insects that can help control the pests and you'll have a much better gardening experience when you're not fighting everything along the way now with the onions will be done probably mid July I'll have these onions will be taken out kohlrabi beets bunching onions radishes they'll all be done mid July all these greens should be all too hot and bolted by then so I'll be planting out this whole bed again the carrots will, carrots will go in between the greens the kale and spinach and chard will all get replanted with a fresh crop because they can grow well in the heat young and then mature into the cold which will give a lot better flavor and they'll last a lot longer well into winter in my zone 6 climate here now the beets will get replanted with beets they can do two seed in my area we have about 150 days of growing season so I can get a couple round of beets in I'll do it in the same spot radishes the same way with the bunching onions as well they'll go in the same area and they'll just get put in again I'm really hoping to have a nice winter selection of greens I'm not sure what will replace the carrots yet but probably more carrots because you can never have too many carrots carrots will continue being good all the way through winter you can even leave them in the ground or you can pull them out and store them in your root cellar with in a box of sand nice sterile moist sand will hold everything for a long time you can go down and just pick a carrot as you need it okay I hope you got something out of this because this is how I plan my garden I'm just bringing it along to show you my process and keep records for myself really if you have any questions feel free to message me but otherwise subscribe and like down below to follow along and see how this bed really turns out thanks for watching